Hi everyone, thanks for joining us this afternoon. We are getting some new insight into the decades long investigation to try to find Jacob Wetterling. Four days after Jacob's remains were found on farmland in Painesville, the man responsible confessed to the crime. On Tuesday, Dan Heinrich admitted to kidnapping and killing the 11 year old boy in St. Joseph on October 22nd of 1989. Search warrants released today show what investigators were looking for when Danny Heinrich was under their radar starting back in January of 1990. And Bill Hudson combed through all of the warrants for us and he joins us now. A lot of paperwork there. Right? An incredible amount of paperwork here. You can imagine after some 26 plus years of investigative documents, all that is overwhelming. But today we got our first look at eight of the search warrants that had long been sealed, revealing the many twists and turns along the way and some leads that led agents down the wrong trail. Less than three months after Jacob Wetterling's abduction, investigators were already looking at Danny Heinrich with suspicion. He was some monster creeping around out in our county. At the time of Jacob's disappearance, Danny Heinrich lived in an apartment about a mile west of where the remains were buried. Weeks after the abduction, he moved in with his father south of town. He was being looked at for a possible connection with several recent child assaults. Now, newly unsealed documents reveal investigators first searching Heinrich's home in January 1990. They found no gun, clothing, or other items linking him to Jacob's disappearance. But during that search, they did acquire his car's tire treads. Tests later showed they were consistent with, but not an exact match, with tire impressions left at Jacob's crime scene. It would be 25 long years before Heinrich was a target once again, after investigators arrested him for child pornography. But their biggest break came on August 30th. Heinrich confessed and led investigators to Jacob's grave the next day, where initially they found Jacob's red hockey jacket, a mesh shirt, and some bones. Tests later showed those were animal bones. So two days later, investigators went back, where along a pasture fence line, they uncovered Jacob's remains. Now some other search warrants unsealed today tell us why Wetterling's neighbor Dan Rassier had long been a person of interest and why for 11 long years those suspicions led authorities down the wrong road. And you're saying Danny Heinrich was off of the radar for 25 mm -hmm. years. Did they say why it took so long or, you know, before they looked at him again? You know, Amelia, a lot of people are wondering that. But you have to remember that uh, he, at this point he was only suspected and never convicted with any of those child sex assaults in the Painesville area. And in 2004, investigators then began pursuing a theory that the abductor was on foot. So they didn't look at him. We're going to have more on that and how it relates to Dan Rassier tonight at 6. All right. We'll see you then, Bill. You bet. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We also learned today that the Wetterling family will host a memorial service for Jacob on Sunday, September 25th. It will be at 10 in the morning at the College mm -hmm. of St. Benedict. And tonight, the Minnesota Twins will wear red jerseys with a number 11 patch, and their opponents will do the same. Then tomorrow, at the Minnesota Gophers football game, the school will hand out 11 for Jacob stickers, and it plans to honor him at that game. Tonight at 6, we will get an up-close look at the Twins patches.